Welcome to Vegan Food and Living's Simply Vegan podcast with me, Holly Johnson, and my co-host, Molly Pickering. Each week, we discuss the latest vegan news, taste test the newest vegan products, and speak to some of the leading names in veganism about everything from nutrition, immunity, and weight loss to recipe ideas and alternative proteins. We also answer your questions each week, so don't forget to email us at simplyvegan at anthem.co.uk. Hey everyone, welcome to the last episode in series four. We had a really good time last week with our little uh, first birthday party, didn't we, Molly? I loved it. I think I might have maybe gotten a little bit too drunk, but that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. It's a birthday. <laughs> I know. I was editing it and thinking, hmm, you're kind of slurring a little bit towards the end, Holly. I was like, oh no. Yeah, if you didn't listen, then uh, listen back to last week's episode because it it was good fun and it was good to look back over the last year and and all the amazing people that we've spoken to. So to summarise what we've been doing over the last month, we've been doing a whole food plant-based challenge, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. Um, Trying. (laughs) (laughs) I... I personally, so I'll ask you how you got on in a minute, Molly. Okay. I'll just I'll just give everyone a debrief on how it went for me. Um, <laughs> I was so up for this. I, I when I worked, first went vegan overnight, I went whole food plant based vegan, mm-hmm. and I was not eating anything you know processed at all. Um, I didn't work on the podcast. I wasn't sampling any you know, delicious treats um, from the supermarket. <laughs> and I was proper clean living and I felt absolutely incredible. Um, lost weight, lost all my, well, I had a bit of bloating at first, but then my stomach was like, you know, I just felt like, you know, yeah. when your stomach feels good. Like your gut feels good. You're Everything on top was, of things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was kind of like, oh my God, I'm going to feel like that again. And, you know, I'm just going to be like walking around with, I don't know, stars coming out of my... <laughs> just floating. Not, just literally not... <laughs> floating on cloud nine. Um, that, that did not happen at all. It was... Do you know what? <clears throat> it's been quite a stressful month for me. Um, we've had illness after, as I discussed a few episodes ago, um, after boasting that I haven't been ill, I got ill um, with, <laughs> with this sort of worst cold ever and it just wouldn't go away. Then my daughter got COVID um, and yeah, it's just been one thing after the other. And, and to be honest, what I think I can actually take from this is that life is not perfect. It's not always how you want it to be. Sometimes it's stressful. Sometimes it's hectic mm-hmm. and you just don't have time to be, you know, eating food plant based. <laughs> 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 to maybe be cooking every single thing from scratch, including all your snacks. And, you know, so I, I kind of looked at my diet and thought, you know what? It's not actually that bad. And if I'm eating the occasional processed meal and I, I don't really eat ready meals and stuff, but I'm just no. talking, you know, something that I don't know. A biscuit. <laughs> exactly. It's not the end of the world. No. How was it for you? So for me, it was actually quite interesting. I don't think I've ever... I've tried being whole food for like a bit, like tried to do a month, maybe did like two weeks and then kind of like fell off the wagon. But for this month, I think I've actually really invested in it and not maybe sort of eaten as I should have and sort of eaten strictly whole food. But I've definitely learned a lot and I've definitely understood that source of the ingredients that you cook with and eat is actually really important to your body. and everything else the environment everything um that being said as you said nobody's perfect and it's actually really really hard it's also quite expensive sometimes um not always but it can be do you know what you look really well obviously we're recording this on on zoom and we have our cameras on don't we (laughs) so we can see each other um you look really good so you know maybe maybe it has you know yeah I feel like it yeah I feel like it has kind of this is probably the longest that I've not caved and I've not like, I'm really focusing on not having processed uh, vegan meat. So f- for me and my boyfriend, it was constantly like every meal or every other meal would be, you know, vegan meat. So it's been really good to sort of explore new ways of cooking and sort of like still having that like meat 
element to yeah. meal, but just like using plants so that's been something that I've really enjoyed yeah sometimes it's just sort of like mixing things up a bit because you do kind of get in a rut don't you yeah like one thing I found by doing it was that rather than like I got into this habit of eating um sort of like maybe toast and avocado or something quite heavy mm. for, for breakfast I mean I wouldn't eat breakfast till a bit later but I was sort of doing that and then feeling a bit like oh you know like my energy yeah. levels weren't great and sometimes it's just about making a little swap so I started having um like some homemade granola with some coconut yogurt oh. and um like a, you know chopped fruit or something in there yeah and sometimes it's like well actually that's a lighter breakfast it's easier to digest and actually I'm getting more nutrients because I'm having all those fruits and you know mm-hmm. perhaps some nuts and stuff so yeah I, I felt like sometimes it's not about necessarily what you're cutting out but what you could be swapping it for that will give you that extra goodness yeah that's something that I like I've really been focusing on is rather than sort of like having this really unhealthy attitude of like right I'm going to cut all this out it's like no what can you use instead and what can you kind of like substitute for and also like you can enjoy the things that you would necessarily deem bad and just kind of like switching my mindset up and just having a sort of better relationship with food and I've definitely felt that that just list last month yeah oh that's good anyone listening give it a try and see how you get on let us know don't forget um you can always email us at simplyvegan at anthem.co.uk or you can comment on any of our social media channels on instagram youtube um and also leave us a review on your platform of choice okay well should we go into the news then um let's go so there's loads and loads of new launches. Literally every time I go on Facebook, I'm like, oh my God, that, you know, this is launching, that's launching. There's, there's VFC, which is run by Matthew Glover, founded by Matthew Glover, should I say, mm-hmm. who, who was the founder of Veganuary. And I'm going to be talking to him next month for World Vegan Month. So that's really exciting. Oh, amazing. That's yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And if you don't follow them on social media, um, go follow them because they, they've got a really sort of quirky way of doing things. A bit tongue in cheek, bit of fun. I really yeah, like it. They're just quite, hel- yeah, they're a bit hilarious, aren't they? It's, they're very, they know, I don't say they know how to market it, but they're good. They're good at selling the brand. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So um, BFC is now launching in Tesco, um, which is really exciting. They're um, launching chicken fillets, popcorn chicken and chicken bites. Um, they're about £3, £3.50. And that's going to be in 370 Tesco stores. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, the Greg's Festive Bakes. What do you think of this one? <gasps> <laughs> oh my gosh so honestly when this story came out the other morning I think I took the biggest gasp I've ever had in my life <laughs> it, this is what I've been dreaming of honestly this is what I've been wanting really? for ages and now it's just happening it's crazy so what's in it <laughs> corn soy pieces there's a sage and onion stuffing amazing a vegan bacon crumb delicious and finished with a cranberry and sage sauce. You're making it sound sort of positively, uh, what's the word? Sort of hoped cuisine. Sexy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sexy. That's all, what it is. All wrapped up in pastry. That sounds really good. I love the Christmas sandwiches that they bring out at this time of year. I think Aldi <sighs> do like a parsnip fritter one and Boots do a really good mm. one as well. They're so tasty. So, so good. Put a roast between bread and there. Yum, yum. <laughs> Delicious, honestly. Um, you mentioned corn. Um, so they've also got a new range out. It's like a fake away range. And that's, Ooh. I think that's at Tesco's as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one to look out for. Have we got the um, plant milk chocolate from Cadbury's yet? Uh, so can I just explain what's has happened with this? Did they send Cause... it to you and not me? <laughs> so wait there. <laughs> the build up for this launch was just I was so excited like an actual kid at Christmas it was mega wasn't it it was like you know the press release was like embargoed you know mustn't tell a soul it, until this date there was an apology the whole lot I was waiting for the delivery because I said it'll be here sort of like between lunch and I was so excited the postwoman come and knocked on my door with this beautiful 
Cadbury's box it was like so tall skinny and I was like oh my god I've got so much chocolate I'm going to cry I opened it up and it was a bloody bunch of flowers what with an apology saying you're gonna have to wait a bit longer it's not ready for the press to sample so they said it it will be out soon so we'll get it soon but the as lovely as the flowers were and I'm not being ungrateful Cadbury thank you so much (laughs) but let me tell you the disappointment on my face when I opened that box and it was filled to the brim of chocolate I didn't get flowers or anything so you know know. come on Cadbury (laughs) just be grateful (laughs) okay well we'll have to wait a bit longer to try that um but yeah, some other news this week. Prince Charles spoke to the BBC, didn't he? And this has yeah. been going, going, doing the rounds. Um, so he said for years he's not had meat or fish on two days a week and no dairy on one day a week. Um, and the kind of the headlines that have come out of this have been uh, Prince Charles promotes a vegan diet, um, which, yeah. you know, I guess when you read the story, you're thinking, mm, I'm not sure he's promoting veganism, but it's still brilliant. You know, like reducing in any way we can is um, is great. So but, you know, I think I'd like just to say, Charlie boy, you know, maybe could you go a little step further? <laughs> you can do a bit more like as amazing as it is. And I'm so for sort of like everyone doing it imperfectly um to sort of like help the movement I think that is really how it's going to sort of grow yeah I think we should um you know launch an appeal to get Prince Charles to do the January what do you reckon I'm going to try and get in touch with him (laughs) let's do it let's we'll change the monarchy and also stop hunting that would be nice (laughs) okay yeah I'll add that into in in my email (laughs) amazing watch this space yeah (laughs) Um, okay, well, let's go on to reviews this week. So, first up, the muck plant. Did you get it? I got it. I went on the hunt for it after Molly said, Let's try the muck plant this week. It's out. It's out. <laughs> so, I was like, Okay. So, off I went to my local McDonald's. No, no, we don't have that. Off I went to the other local McDonald's, which was like 20 minutes in the car. No, we don't have it. So apparently it's only in certain stores and it's being rolled out everywhere in January. So I have not tried it yet, but I've seen a lot of people on socials um, trying it. So what did you think? First of all, I'm sorry that you had to go to each one. I thought you just had like an Uber Eats in your town. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're still like in 1985 here. Oh my, when you, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um secondly okay I wanted to like not like it or like have something bad to say about it but it it delivered it was good do you know what it kind of tasted a bit like from what I remember McDonald's patties like the beef patties yeah kind of like really dry sort of like lacking flavor like an old flip-flop or something like an old dry flip-flop that's just smothered in lettuce and mayo yeah not even smothered um but the Beyond Meat one, it was actually so good. It was really smoky. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, the bread, it was good. The cheese slice was, you know how I feel about cheese. It was actually really good. Um, I mean, McDonald's cheese, can we class it as cheese? Yeah. Maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> yeah, it had all of the qualities of like a quarter pounder from what I remember. Amazing. I Someone had posted on um, one of the Facebook groups, actually, that she was freaking out because she, it was so realistic. Mm. She was really scared that it wasn't the Beyond Meat and it was actually, you know, a beef burger. So yeah. <laughs> that's one only, problem, isn't it, with it being yeah. too similar? I think the only reason why I kind of knew that it wasn't a real like beef patty was because I remember them being like so dull. Right. And like always needing to have like whenever I'd have one, I'd always customize it. I'd add like extra pickles and extra other things because I'm pickle mad just to kind of like make it a bit, you know, worth my while. Yeah. Um, but this one, it was good. I wouldn't have it all the time, but no. I mean, we're not promoting for it to be all the time. No, exactly. I, I Yeah, I did have mixed feelings and I was almost relieved when they didn't have it because I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to eat it. But then I yeah. do want to try it. So uh yeah, keep an eye out for it in your local Mackie D's from January if you um, 
if you haven't tried it already. Mm-hmm. Um, Wagamamas, we tried mm-hmm. also. So their range is now 50% plant-based, which is absolutely brilliant. Well it's done, Wagamamas. Insane. For a high street chain, like a restaurant, to have that much like vegan options and actually the quality of it is so good and reasonable price as well I think it's incredible it's just absolutely fantastic news it really makes me smile um (laughs) yeah so what did you try did you try any of the new dishes because they've got quite a few new ones haven't they Holly what did I try come on now (laughs) everything (laughs) so we ordered the no chicken teriyaki buns oh yeah I tried those Oh, wow. Yeah. Let me just say, wow. Um, <laughs> what else we got? The no duck donburi. Oh, lovely. Which oh. was really good. The only thing is, I know the egg has been around for a while now. I didn't like the egg. <clears throat> no, I had that when they did the Gaz Oakley thing. Mm. I, I wasn't, I, I just didn't see the need for it, actually. No, it was just so heavy. It's just like a coconut mousse with a sriracha mayo in it. And I think... In my head, because my brain was like, it's going to taste like an egg, and then it didn't. I kind yeah. of like had this weird sort of, I don't know, messes with your mind. Yeah, didn't know what was going on. Um, what else do we have? The chili squid. Oh, oh, didn't see oh. that. You didn't have the chili squid. No, go back now. <laughs> okay, go back. Oh my god. Oh, oh I'm disappointed. Yeah. So this is lightly battered pulled king oyster mushrooms. Oh, yum yum. Incredible. Really? Honestly. Maybe the maybe one of the best dishes there. Oh wow. And, uh, okay. I'm so sorry you forgot it. But <laughs> in the new in the new vegan food and living issue, the November issue, they have got the recipe for it, the official Wagamama's recipe for the ah. vegan food. So get the issue. I've got it. So I will look that up and see if I can make mm-hmm. it myself. Brilliant. Thanks for the yeah. tip, Molly. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Wait, there's more. Oh, okay. She's still going. <laughs> I'm still going. Hang on. <laughs> um, we had the vegetable tempura, which I've had before. It was all right. Next to everything else that we were eating, it was just kind of like, it was there. Yeah. Um, the, what was it? No, a spare rib, mini spare rib. Oh, I Even love the ribs. Rib. Oh. But the ramen. Oh, Spare nice. Rib ramen. Oh, oh my wow. God. Oh, wow. Okay. And, uh, annoyingly, though, I was so full at this point, I couldn't eat it. <laughs> Eyes bigger than your belly. Yeah. But overexcited. It, <laughs> it was mad. It was so mad. But I, yeah. I felt like a food a food critic there and I was just like I have to I have to sample everything for my job (laughs) oh it sounds like such a good meal out I I got my takeaway because we were sort of well you know my daughter was isolating so we couldn't Mm. really go out so um yeah but yeah absolutely loved it I love the ribs I've had those a few times now and you kind of almost expect there to be like a bone in the middle don't you but yeah it's actually mad (laughs) how like the flavor of it is so good yeah they actually do some vegan ribs in Morrison's actually in the frozen section that I've had before that are very similar they're really Mm. nice um okay well I'm aware that we're running out of time so let's move on to what this week's questions um, so first question was, um, I'm throwing a dinner party. What can I cook? Um, have you done like a vegan dinner party before? I am actually a very good dinner party host. I am Are you? Own. Yes, I'm great. I, I'm so good. Um, I haven't done it for a while, though. Um, I normally go for like a curry if I'm kind of just if quite a lot of people are coming over. I think like a curry and like loads of lovely sides um I normally do like a dal and then like some um like sagaloo and then maybe mm. a nice writer and then some flatbreads and that seems to kind of like go down a nice tree and then you get a lovely dessert as well um yeah I'm more of a like one big dish everyone tucks in kind of thing yeah that like a one pot dish is so much mm. easier isn't it than trying to do loads of different little things yeah I I once tried to do um tapas and I would definitely (laughs) advise against that because there's so many different elements yeah it's like cooking like 10 different meals um so that that was a disaster I was so stressed (laughs) (laughs) um so when I had friends a while ago I did uh three courses that were from the rebel recipes cookbook and I've Ooh. mentioned it loads of times before on the podcast but I just love Nikki Webster it's my kind of food it's kind of mm-hmm. she she sort of traveled a bit when she was younger and it's sort of inspired by all these different Amazing. cuisines 
Um, and yeah, really delicious. And it's all kind of like from scratch. So like the dessert is um, kind of like you ground, it's like a no bake dessert. Okay. I'm all over because I don't really do baking and it's kind of um, <laughs> like ground nuts and um, dates and things like that. And Ooh. then you kind of press the base down into like a sort of a tart base and then you make up the like caramel, salted caramel layer. Oh my goodness. And then some toasted pecans on the top. So yeah, that's a really good one. Um, I'm not sure if it's on her website, but if you go to rebelrecipes.com, she'll have loads of of, um, I think she's actually got a whole feature on there on doing a vegan mm. party. Oh, so yeah, um, yeah. My sister suggested doing like figs with um, vegan halloumi, oh. or um, stuffed with like cashew cheese or something like that. Mm-hmm. That sounds nice. Yeah, that could be really nice. Maybe with a bit of sweetness, like um, like some agave maybe like a garve. Yeah, oh. yeah. So that's a good one for starters. Um, and then the other question was about um, protein again. So, um, so this is from Ellen, um, who said she's desperately trying to lose weight, and NHS guidance suggests having one meal a day that doesn't contain carbs. As all plant-based protein seems to contain carbs, is this possible? Any suggestions? Well, my first thought was that I'd throw this out to the plant-based health professionals. Um, we've had a few members on before, Dr. Shreen Kassam, a few series ago. If you go back through um, and have a listen, she was brilliant. Um, so I will seek their advice for you, Ellen. Um, also listen to episodes on weight loss with Kath Short and Olivier Mancondo. Again, if you go back through at the Apple podcast, you can just scroll through and find them. Um, tofu is really good. That's a ho- sort of high in protein and low in fat. Broccoli, isn't broccoli really high in protein as well? Yeah, it's a tricky one with the NHS guidance because I don't want to say... <laughs> don't listen to the NHS. Don't listen to the NHS because I might get sued. However, having spoken to a lot of top doctors... Mm-hmm. Uh, on this podcast, um, as I said, Dr. Shreem Kassam, she's a King's College, you know, doctor. She really knows her stuff. And she's campaigning for plant-based nutrition to be, uh, you know, part of um, healthcare professionals yeah. tra- training because it isn't at the moment. So I personally, when I look at the NHS guidance, I don't always um, yeah. maybe adhere to it. However, I don't want to advise you of that. So I will get back to you, Ellen. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Next up, we've got Katie Bespow. Um, She's the like 15 minute vegan, isn't she? So she's got like loads of cookbooks. She's all about sort of really fast cooking. I suppose yeah. a bit like Jamie Oliver, you know, and you kind of kind of think, can you really do that in 15 minutes? Who's but... that other one? Was it Joe Wicks, Lena 15? Oh, That's yeah. what that reminds me of. <laughs> yeah. I know. So I did ask her, can you actually, you know, cook a decent meal in that time? Apparently, yes. So have a listen to what she has to say. So having a little break next week and we'll be back with series five for World Vegan Month in November. <sighs> Stick around and have a listen to Katie. Katie how are you? Hi I'm very well thank you how are you? I'm good thanks we've had a few technical problems haven't we getting uh, zoom to work but we're here now so it's all good. We should be experts shouldn't we by now? <laughs> <laughs> we really should yeah um so I mean you've got a new cookbook out haven't you is that what number is that in the lo- in your long line of books? I'm not quite sure it's happened. Um, so this is my seventh book. So this is Vegan Roast in Pan, which is out on the 11th of November. Um, so there's something a little bit different from what I usually do. Obviously, it's really easy and effortless. Um, but instead of sort of standing over a pan for 15 minutes, you put it all in the tray. 
put it in the oven and let the oven do the hard work for you. <laughs> oh, that sounds like my kind of cooking, definitely. <laughs> um, so do you want to tell us how you started on this whole journey then? Like, when did you go vegan? And Yeah, I went vegan um, back in 2006, um, which was long before it was cool to be vegan. And I didn't know any other vegans. Um, there wasn't really much availability of anything, really. No. Um, I just moved down uh, to South London for uni. Um, and yeah, I was a vegetarian at the time um, and just overnight decided to go vegan. It was I stumbled across a really beautiful fruit and veg market in Tooson in South London. Um, and everything was really fresh and vibrant and gorgeous. So I decided just to start cooking with it. Um, I didn't need cheese. I didn't need the eggs. I was making gorgeous food. And obviously being being young back then, showing my age now, <laughs> um, I just wanted to cook the sort of food that my mum was cooking at home. So I was making lots of comfort food. But also, who has the time to, you know, to spend ages in the kitchen? So everything was, was really quick. Um, obviously, I was at uni in a completely unrelated field, um, actually physiotherapy in the NHS. So it's completely different. Oh, wow. Um, and just decided... Uh, I had lots of sort of friends and housemates and things asking me for recipes. So I started putting them on a, a really simple blog for people to get hold of. Um, and then I started getting commissions uh, really through emails and saying, you know, could you could you do this for us? Could you write a few recipes, different newspapers? And it really accidentally happened from there. Um, so yeah, I've made, made, it into, made it into the best job in the world. <laughs> That's amazing. That's such an interesting story. Your, your life could have gone very differently then, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've got everything to be thankful for, for Tootin Market and deciding that day to, to just go vegan. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So you literally just made the decision and that was it. You just went vegan yeah. like on the spot. Never went back. Yeah, the only thing that I ever missed was uh, Fry's Turkish Delight. You know, the, the Turkish Delight that had the milk chocolate on. So I used to just, I started making that <laughs> oh no that's, that is such a random thing to miss usually it's like cheese or chocolate <laughs> yeah. the only cheese I used to sort of get the mix taken out at uni because it was well, you buy your cheese in a health food shop you know now you can get cheese from artisan vegan makers and all these lovely places but I had to go to a health food shop to get yeah. a lot of stuff which yeah <laughs> was was quite funny <laughs> it's it's changed so much hasn't it in that time it's um it's incredible really um, so why did you focus on sort of fast and easy cooking then? It's the sort of food that I like to cook. So to be on really honest, I'm I'm super lazy with food and super <laughs> lazy with cooking. <laughs> and obviously, as I was uh, writing and, and starting up what I do now, I was also working full time in the NHS. Um, so it was it was what I could fit around Um on that really and I used to put the quick recipes on the blog and they were always the, the most popular surprise surprise everyone's really busy yeah <laughs> so so yeah so I really sort of focused on that and it was the sort of food that I like to eat I like to cook who wants to spend ages in the kitchen and then spend 10 minutes eating it's not me <laughs> I want to yeah. spend, you know a short amount of time cooking and, and then really lots of time enjoying it yeah so um, true <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know there's so many there's so many simple ways to do it and show so many shortcuts and I think people often presume that you're going to be boiling beans and you know pearl barley for hours on end and, and it's just not the case at all is it is it really possible to cook amazing meals then in just 15 minutes I think it is yeah I definitely think it is I mean as I say it's how I eat and um obviously the books the books do really well and and I think it is just, as I say, about the shortcuts. So about having things in your store cupboard that you can use quickly, whether it be a jar of harissa for lots of like spicy flavours, some curry paste, um, you know, coconut milk, lots of things that you can use that are versatile, that you can open a can, for example, um, and just use it. So you don't have to do any of that pre-prep. And you can pick it all up in the supermarkets, budget supermarkets these days. You don't have to go to, to a health food shop anymore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, you can create something delicious and, you know, in, in a short amount of time, definitely. Do you do lots of food prep, like chopping things up and freezing them? Uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. I mean, I try to time the recipes so, um, you know, the, the chop time is included in the cook time. So I think if you, if you time it well, so you get your pan on with your royal as you cook, you're cooking, you're just chopping your onion, get the onion in and get everything going and it flows as, as you go with it. But I mean, there's no harm at all in food prep, um, getting things in the freezer. I mean, I always freeze ginger, for example, and just grate it from frozen into food because um, you don't really eat. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't eat that much ginger in a week. Um, so it's things like that, and it's, it's really it's a good cheap 
you know sustainable way to cook and eat you know if you're doing it like that as well and, yeah you know, batch cook batch cook as well you know if you have some free time or you know a bit of extra produce in your kitchen just make a double portion and get it in the freezer and you've got a homemade ready meal <laughs> Yeah, or leftovers for the rest of the week if you've got a, a fam. Yeah, a family like me, it doesn't seem to last very long. <laughs> I need to, I need to quadruple the recipe. I think. Yeah, um, that's but, it. <laughs> yeah, I started doing that with ginger after sort of constantly buying it, and then it would slowly sort of sit there shriveling, and you kind of look at it feeling guilty as the weeks go by thinking oh no the ginger and then it's like oh yeah I can just stick it in the freezer and then it's just there whenever I need it (laughs) yeah it's such a perfect thing to do isn't it and also I find with curry paste as well especially if you're getting a you know something like a a massaman curry paste something a bit out of the ordinary that you don't you're not probably going to use within a month you can freeze that in ice cube trays and just pop it into whatever you're cooking from frozen and it preserves it so any like shortcuts like that you know it's quick and it's it's cheaper and you reduce yeah. your food waste as well yeah that's a great idea what are your share a few of your favorite speedy meals with us then I mean um obviously with this being my seventh book <laughs> there's quite a few <laughs> uh, obviously I love I love I've got a fake away book I love fake ways um I find it's quicker to cook something that is to call for a takeaway where I am I don't know about you <laughs> yeah and um, so something like a sweet and sour possibly like a Hong Kong style with with battered cauliflower lots of sweet and sour sauce oh, sounds good to me and um, obviously pasta dishes for midweek as well something like courgette and lemon and um, you can do that with tagliatelle uh, just really simple food you've got things in the store cupboard you can use it up and obviously from the new book as well there's lots of really nice recipes like an apple and ginger dal so with a dal people think is that going to be really time consuming I'm going to be stood there in the pan no with this you pop all your ingredients into one tray in the oven and it cooks within 45 minutes you can go and do better things um (laughs) you can go and prep something else you can go and do like a biryani at the same time which cooks in you know in 45 minutes as well um so yeah so it's it's a different it's it's a different way of of doing it as I say instead of standing over a pan you actually just let in the oven do it for you yeah brilliant yeah I'm all over that I can carry on working then (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know if that's a good thing um what what's an average day like for you then as a recipe creator and a vegan chef and a blogger it's very variable and obviously the um the covid with the pandemic has changed things quite considerably and um, I do spend quite a lot of time in the kitchen obviously developing recipes I test everything at least three times before it makes it into a book or a magazine. Um, so a lot of time is spent like that. Usually the mornings, I'll pop out and get some produce and do that. And then the afternoon, I'll write things up, get lots of admin type things done, sent over, um, and often do, think, do things like this as well and, and interviews. Pre-pandemic, it was maybe doing a bookshop event or cookery classes as well. Um, so it's really diverse, but I, I, it's definitely the best job in the world. I think of nothing better to do. Yeah, <laughs> I get to get to cook and eat and write about it. I mean, yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> I've always wondered what it's like. So when you cook the meal to presumably like shoot it for a magazine or a book or whatever, what do you do with the food? Do you do you eat it all or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it all goes, yeah. And whatever doesn't go gets portioned up and taken to family. Um, so their freezers are full of things. Um, <laughs> yeah, and if, if anything goes wrong, which things go wrong, you know, all the time when you cook it, I just make it into a soup and then suddenly develop a really nice soup. <laughs> so Brilliant. There's always a way. <laughs> yeah. And what about photographing? Do you do all your own photography? Um, for the books, we have a wonderful photographer called Luke Albert, um, but I do bits and bobs of social media. Um, so yes, yeah, so I just use an iPhone for the things for social media. Um, but yeah, there's so many fantastic food photographers who make such a fantastic job of it. Yeah. Give me some tips then for making my food look good on Instagram because I'm so rubbish at it. And I, you know, I'm not sort of trying to be an influencer or anything. I just want people to kind of go, oh, that looks tasty. I might try a vegan meal tonight. Um, but it just looks so yeah. rubbish that I don't think it's inspiring anyone. <laughs> I think, you know, it's it's difficult because by the time we cook dinner, especially this time of year, the natural light's gone. But cooking, sort of shooting anything in natural light is is the key, uh, especially with food, because any sort of shadows look a bit, a bit weird, don't they, unless yeah. it's from natural light. And also as well, portion up a little bit less than what you're going to eat, because a little bit less food on the plate always photographs better. And then you can put as much on as you want when you finish. <laughs> pile it up afterwards 
So I need to put a tiny bit on the plate and cook it sort of in the day rather than <laughs> tea time. Yeah, if you want something to look really good, yeah. Or yeah, I suppose you could go all out and do it by candlelight and, you know, yeah. get some lovely shadows like that. But I think if you want, the, want it to look really delicious, natural daylight is so, you know, maybe get your maybe get your tea on about two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> in winter. <laughs> Just reheat it at sort of five, six yeah. o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um it's our birthday this week we are one years old um one year old and we wondered whether you'd be up for a quick fire quiz on the theme of one yes why not <laughs> <laughs> okay here goes what's the one thing you love most about being vegan the amazing people I get to meet oh yeah it's such a great community isn't it it really is yeah it's so accessible I think yeah what's the one thing you dislike about being vegan (laughs) some of the people I get to meet (laughs) oh really (laughs) obviously you know you get asked the same questions and although I have to say I think in the last few years people people's minds have opened quite a lot and you know they can find the 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 products that they love on the shelf it's not just the if and the questions anymore is it you know it's a little bit deeper (laughs) yeah so you've had sort of quite a bit of negative backlash in the past, but that's changing. <laughs> some of it, yeah, some of it. Um, so often when I do food demos, I did one at the Great Yorkshire Show a few years back, which is a huge agricultural show. And um, that was interesting. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it, it was fun to represent veganism at such a, a huge, you know, show for the agriculture industry. Yeah, lots of angry farmers, I'm imagining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then quite a lot of ones as well who who were like, can we grow chickpeas? How do we be more sustainable? So really nice conversations around that, actually. Oh, that's well. fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, isn't it? The word vegan just seems to, with some people, it's such a trigger. It, and just, you don't look like a vegan. I'm not really sure how we're supposed to look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you look nice and friendly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a normal person like you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what one vegetable could you not live without? Oh, carrots. <laughs> <laughs> it's versatile. It does everything. Raw, cooked. It's brilliant. You can soup it. You can use it in curries. It's it's fantastic. Carrots, definitely. Love them roasted. Yeah, that's so true. Carrots are brilliant. I've been making a lot of carrot fritters, actually, over the summer with my, um, I use Riverford veg boxes and yeah, they're um they're really good because you can just save them for lunch and have them for dinner as well. And yeah, they're um... delicious. Yeah, and you can always have some like nice lime pickle or something with those. Get lots of coriander in them as well. Sounds Ooh, delicious. Nice. Okay, name one famous vegan that you'd like to meet. Uh, Chris Packham. Oh, I like the yeah. work he does. Um, it'd be great to have a conversation with with Chris Packham. He's brilliant, isn't he? He's getting so much flack at the moment. Hasn't he had a, like a suspected arson attack on his house? I mean, yeah, I saw that on his fence. Poor guy. And yeah. let's hope things get a bit easier for him. And, you know, it's a real shame, you know, given the situation. Um, but like, fingers crossed, fingers crossed things will easy out for him. Yeah, bless him. <laughs> we'd, no. love to, we'd love to get him on the uh, podcast. I have tried, but um, yeah, he's probably a bit... <laughs> bit busy with his other projects <laughs> I imagine he's so inspirational <laughs> yeah yeah he's fantastic I follow him on Facebook and he's uh, yeah he's definitely worth a follow okay um I'm coming around for dinner what one dish will you cook for me it's really hard to pick one but I would say a Moroccan style tagine with chickpeas apricots carrots lots of lemon juice lots of salt something really delicious that we can all just cook in soon oh yum with some like flatbreads or something or flatbreads tabbouleh olives oh we'll go all out (laughs) oh god okay well just get me in your diary (laughs) that sounds amazing Um, (laughs) yeah okay finally what one thing would you change about our food system uh factory farming yeah yeah, I think factory farming it's it's a it's a scary process and it's a it's a scary thought for the future as well and what that means to the food system and you know animal welfare. Yeah, it's a no brainer, isn't it? I I spoke to uh, Dr. Alice Bruff. I don't know if you've heard of her. She works with the yeah. Scrap Factory Farming um, campaign, and she was fantastic. She's an ex pig vet and. Yeah, as you probably know, she's, yeah, just the, her experiences are quite an eye-opener. So, um, 
Yeah, definitely. I think it's the I think sort of factory farming, it's a terrible way of eating, terrible way of producing food, if you like, you know, and it's it affects everybody within its process, jobs a lot. Yeah, it really does. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait to see your new book. So what date is that out? That's out the 11th of November. Lovely. Okay. Thank you so much, Katie. Thanks for having me. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode and to the end of series four thank you so much everyone for listening and don't forget we won't be here next week so in the meantime have listened back to some past episodes or we'll head to the vegan food and living website please 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 leave us a review on your platform of choice we will love you forever and we'll see you on the 2nd of november to kick off world vegan month with lots of exciting new guests